Hey, what is going on guys? Clickwood here, back again, bringing you guys another video, and today, what we're going to be talking about are the 2017 NFL playoffs. I'm going to give you guys my full playoff bracket, the whole thing broken down. We're going to talk about every single game that could happen here in my bracket, and uh, I'm going to give you guys my prediction of who is going to represent the NFC and the AFC in the Super Bowl, as well as who is going to walk away as the Super Bowl champion. So... What we're going to do is we're going to start off in the top left corner of your screen. And what we have there is the Miami Dolphins, the wild card at 10 and 6, playing in Pittsburgh against the Steelers at 11 and 5. Now, most people expect that this is probably going to be a blowout in Pittsburgh's favor. Uh, it is worth noting, of course, that the Dolphins are going to be dealing with a little bit of an interesting quarterback situation with Ryan Tannehill still out. Matt Moore is their quarterback right now. Now, most people would say that Matt Moore is an obvious downgrade from Ryan Tannehill, but I think it's worth noting that Matt Moore has arguably played better than Ryan Tannehill this season. Eight touchdowns, three interceptions for Matt Moore. But on the other side of the ball, Pittsburgh has won seven straight games. The Dolphins are coming off of a big, big loss in Week 17 to the Patriots. I mean, that game was pretty much destruction from the beginning to the end. But they had previously won nine of their previous ten games. So kind of interesting game here. I, I personally think that this one is going to go a little bit differently than their first game that they had. The Dolphins beat the crap out of the Steelers back in Week 6 when these two teams played. It was 30-15 to 15 in that contest, and the Steelers got absolutely manhandled. Jay Ajayi went for 204 yards. Ben Roethlisberger threw for only 189 yards with a touchdown and two picks. Le'Veon Bell only got 10 carries in that game, and Antonio Brown was completely held in check. Four catches for 39 yards in that contest. Look, I understand. You can see that, obviously, the Dolphins did dominate that first game. But I just think these teams are going in completely different directions right now. Like, like I said, the Dolphins were pretty hot, but they were winning games fairly unconvincingly in a lot of cases. And the Steelers are just red hot right now. I just don't think the Dolphins are going to have the offensive firepower to go into Pittsburgh and get a win. So I'm going to take the Steelers in this one, and they are going to move on to the second round. The next game that we're going to talk about is a very interesting one because I think these two teams are two of the least skilled currently left in the playoffs. And I hate to say that because the Raiders have been very good throughout the regular season, but right now they're without their quarterback, Derek Carr. I mean, it's a bad situation right now. Matt McGloin also sounds like he's not going to play, so it's probably going to be Connor Cook starting for the Oakland Raiders here in the wild card round. They do have to go on the road to play the Texans in this one. This is not a great situation right now. Now, the Raiders did beat the Texans when these teams played. It was a big day for Derek Carr. He went for 295, three touchdowns and a pick. Michael Crabtree was held in check in that game, and Lamar Miller actually rushed for 140 yards and a touchdown. But again, this is a very different game script right now. The Texans are going to be going back to Brock Osweiler because it sounds like Tam, Tom Savage is not going to be able to suit up. So it's it's like they're going back to the guy that they gave up on earlier in the year. So, oh man, it, it's a very difficult game in my opinion to call this one because roster-wise, I don't think there's any question right now that the Raiders are a better roster top to bottom than the Texans. But they have definitely not been going in the right direction since the injury to Derek Carr. So in this game... I am going to say that the Texans are going to walk away with the W in this one. They're playing at home. That's really the differentiator for this one, in my opinion. If it was Oakland, I might go with Oakland. But, you know, I, I think Houston's going to be able to walk away with this one and move on to the second round. Moving on to the NFC now, we're going to go in the top right corner of your screen. We've got Detroit at Seattle. Now, the Seahawks are 3-3 three and three in their past six games. However... They are 7-1 and one at home on the season. The Lions have lost three straight. They're probably the least efficient team right now, just stumbling into the playoffs. Three losses, two other playoff teams, the Giants, the Cowboys, and the Packers in a row. And the Lions are 3-5 and five this season total on the road. They've given up nine touchdown passes in those past three losses to the Giants, Cowboys, and Packers. And Seattle's only given up two touchdown passes over their past three games. This, to me, seems like a recipe for Seattle to win pretty comfortably at home. Yeah, the Lions have been playing fairly well this season. Yeah, Matt Stafford's played his best football. 
but I just don't think that they have the firepower to get things done against the Seattle defense, and I think Russell Wilson's going to be able to put up enough points for the Seahawks to be able to walk away with a win in this one. In the final wild card game, probably the one people are most excited for, I would say, on average, this is going to be the Giants going on the road to Green Bay, trying to get a W. The Giants are kind of one of the Cinderella teams this season. The Packers, though, a six-game winning streak, including wins over Houston, Seattle, and Detroit, who are all playoff teams. The Giants have been a very good second-half team historically, and this season they've been very good. But losses to Pittsburgh and Philadelphia just absolutely have to be a concern right now. The Giants haven't scored more than 19 points in a game since Week 12. That's a long time. That I mean, that's a really long time that they haven't scored even 20 points. Green Bay, their offense, yeah, it struggled at times, but they're putting points on the board right now. Aaron Rodgers is playing as well as anybody in the league at the moment. And yes, the Giants defense has played very, very well lately. But I think the Packers offense has played just a little bit better. Packers are 7-1 and one at home this season. Giants are just 4-4 four and four on the road after that Week 17 victory over the Redskins. So I think the Giants are going to take the L in this one. It's going to be a close one, though. I would not be surprised if the Giants do walk away with the win, but I'm going with Green Bay. I just think Aaron Rodgers is too clutch right now to put up just, I think he's going to put up enough points to be able to get the win over the Giants who are really struggling themselves on offense. And, uh, you know, Green Bay's defense, yeah, it hasn't been great, but it's stepped it up when it's counted over the past few weeks. So I do think that Green Bay is going to get the win at home in Lambeau. Again, 7-1 and one at home this season. So I definitely think that they have the upper hand here against the Giants in the wild card round. Now moving on to the divisional round of the playoffs. Again, we're going to stop, start in the top left corner of your screen. And we've got Pittsburgh against Kansas City. Now, Pittsburgh and Kansas City are two interesting teams here because I think that you're really looking at very different styles of football. Obviously, the Steelers are really willing to go and just try and put as many points on the board as they can, whereas Kansas City, they want to control the clock. They want to grind it out. They want to force turnovers on defense, and so it's going to be an interesting one here. The Chiefs will be at home in this game, though. So keep that in mind. Chiefs are 6-2 and two at home this season. However, Pittsburgh has been a fairly good road team at 5-3 and three this season. The other thing to note, the Pittsburgh Steelers crushed the Chiefs earlier this season when they played 43-14. to 14. Now, that game was in Pittsburgh, but Ben Roethlisberger went for 300 yards, 5 touchdowns, and 0 picks. Le'Veon Bell also ran for 144 yards in that game. I mean, that game was not close at all. Yes, Kansas City's been going in a different direction since then, but Pittsburgh's been hot too. I mean, you can't count out the fact that Pittsburgh has won as many games as they have in a row. And uh, really, guys, they are looking very, very good right now, especially on the offensive side of the ball. The Chiefs have been incredible against the pass down the stretch this season, though. Just two passing touchdowns given up in their final four games. And while the Chiefs' defense has definitely stepped it up in the second half, I do think that their defense is going to have to continue to play at just a ridiculous pace in order to shut down the Steelers and keep the game at a fairly low-scoring pace. Because I just don't think Alex Smith and the Chiefs have the offensive firepower to keep up. If the, if the Steelers start putting up 20 points, 25, you know, 30 points in this game, I just don't think there's any way that Kansas City can keep up and get the W. So I think this is going to be the first road win by a team in the playoffs this season. I do think that the Steelers will go on the road and win this game by at least a touchdown, which is going to be a little bit disappointing for Chiefs fans because I know that they were really happy that they got that first round by and were able to get a game at home. Unfortunately, I just do not think that they have that firepower that they need to keep up with Pittsburgh. And uh, yeah, I, I think if, they, if they're not able to keep the game under 20 points scored, I just do not see a way that they can get the win in this one. So let's move on to the second game in the AFC Divisional Round playoffs. We've got New England at home against the Houston Texans. Now, Houston, again, they're going to be coming off that win over the Raiders. But man, this game just looks like it has blowout written all over it. I mean, on paper, it looks like it's going to be really bad. And on the field, it might be worse. The Patriots have won seven straight. And the Texans could be entrenched in another quarterback controversy if Tom Savage is back. Look for the Patriots' game plan to be to stop DeAndre Hopkins and force the Texans to throw to other receivers and try to run the ball against this excellent run defense that the Pittsburgh or that the Patriots have. New England has only given up two 100-yard rushing days to opposing teams this entire season. 
and I just don't think Lamar Miller is going to be able to do it. I don't think Tom Savage or Brock Osweiler is going to be able to match what Tom Brady is going to do on the field. I think the Patriots win this one fairly easily at home. I don't think it's going to be too much of a game, to be honest with you. And now on to the NFC Divisional Round, and we've got Seattle at Atlanta. Now, these teams played back in Week 6. Seattle won it 26-24. to That game was in Seattle. Kind of an interesting situation because obviously this is flipped. We're going to be in Atlanta. Atlanta's passing offense did his job in that game earlier this season. Matt Ryan threw for 335 yards, three touchdowns. He did throw a pick, but Devonta Freeman was held in check just 40 yards rushing in that game. Now, Seattle's offense has been extremely hot and cold this season, but I think a game against that Atlanta defense, which has given up more points than any other playoff team, should give the Seattle Seahawks a chance to at least keep it close on the scoreboard, and uh, I, I really do think that Seattle is the team that just, they have this crazy magic about them almost. I mean, Seattle just has this history of coming up big in games like this, where you just, you look at it and you're like, how are they going to be able to put up the points? And somehow Russell Wilson just chucks it down the field and there's a guy open and he makes the catch. Like, I, I don't understand really how it happens, but it seems to happen all the damn time. On paper, this really reminds me of the game that Seattle was able to win a couple of seasons ago against the Packers. I mean, they needed a miracle to win that game, but Seattle's been able to make those miracles happen time and time again under Russell Wilson. I think Seattle and their defense steps up in this one. I think they do a little bit better job of shutting down the passing game, taking Julio Jones out of the game just a little bit more. Maybe Richard Sherman has to play lined up against him a little bit more often than he did in the first game to make that happen. But I do think that Seattle is going to get this W in this game. I do think it's going to be a close one, but I think Seattle will edge it out in the end. Now, the second game of the NFC Divisional Round playoffs will see Green Bay heading to Dallas. And man, my Cowboys, can they get it done? The Cowboys starters will have rested for almost two full weeks. We'll have Tyron Smith, who missed the entire game this past week and missed most of the game the previous week. So hopefully he'll be fully healthy. I'm Again, I'm a Cowboys fan, so it's a little bit biased, but I do hope that Dallas is going to be healthy in this one. But it is a little bit of a concern that they're going to be sitting for a couple of weeks here for the most part. I mean, Dak Prescott, Ezekiel Elliott didn't even play. I mean, you look at it like that, and it's going to be a long layoff. A lot of times these things happen, and it's happened historically where the teams just don't really seem to click at the beginning of the game. And if the Cowboys don't click early and Green Bay is able to put up some points, there could be some trouble. I mean, the Packers are maybe the hottest team in the league right now, and they're coming off a win over the Giants in the wild card if they get here. They're going to be riding that wave of momentum. Now, the Packers and the Cowboys did play back in Week 7 in Green Bay, and the Cowboys won in a blowout fashion, 30-16, to two scores for the W. The Cowboys' offense dominated that game. Dak Prescott threw for three touchdowns. Ezekiel Elliott had 157 yards rushing, and that was without Des Bryant. Now, the Packers are certainly playing better, but this is a very tough matchup for them. Probably the worst matchup that they could have in the NFC, to be completely honest with you. If you look at it, I don't think any team is a worse matchup for Green Bay right now than Dallas. Dallas just has what is tough for Green Bay to stop. They have that dominant running game, and they have the ability to make big plays in the passing game. They also have the league's best run defense this season. Quietly, the Cowboys were the number one ranked run defense in the NFL. Green Bay, as we know, has struggled to run the ball. It's all going to be on Aaron Rodgers in this one. If he doesn't have a freaking heroic game, I just don't see how they can keep up in this game. Their defense is also going to have to step up big from the first game when they played. I just don't think both things happen in Dallas. So I am going to take the Cowboys in this one. I think the Cowboys move on to the NFC Championship to face the Seahawks. So now we're down to the final four. In the AFC, we have the Steelers and Patriots. In the NFC, it's the Seahawks and Cowboys. Let's start off with the AFC here. Again, we're talking Steelers going on the road to New England. Probably one of the most exciting potential matchups in the entire playoffs that are even possible. Two of the league's best offenses squaring off, but the difference here is defense. The Steelers may be a middle-of-the-road defense at best, but the difference is that the Patriots have been quietly the league's best scoring defense this season. I mean, they're allowing fewer points than any team in the league this year. 
I think the Steelers will likely get some production out of their offense. I think their heavy hitters, Bell, Roethlisberger, uh, Antonio Brown, I think those guys will get their yardage. The problem is that I think the Patriots are going to be playing that control the clock and bend but don't break defense, and I think it's going to just be enough for them to walk away with the win. I don't expect a huge game from Tom Brady in this one. I actually expect that LeGarrette Blunt is going to do a lot of the heavy lifting in this one, and I think that the Patriots will edge it out. In a relatively close game, but I do think that it's going to be maybe like a 20 to 24 victory for the Patriots in this one. And I do think that they move on to the Super Bowl in this contest. And now on to the NFC Championships. You're going to have the Seahawks heading to Dallas to play the Cowboys. Seahawks heading off of wins against the Lions and the Falcons heading into this NFC Championship game. Certainly be a big momentum lift for them to have those two wins, and especially one on the road against Atlanta. That would be a big game for them. But at home, the Cowboys are 7-1 this season, definitely among the most dominant teams in the league at home. Their only loss at home this season came back in Week 1 when they lost by one point to the Giants. If the Cowboys can get after Russell Wilson, this is going to be a difficult game for the Seahawks. Seattle's offensive line has let Russell Wilson down numerous times this season, and the Cowboys' pass rush has actually been quietly playing quite a bit better down the stretch here, so I think that's possible. I do think that the Cowboys can get after Wilson, force him to make passes, force him to go out of the pocket. Now, granted, Wilson is the kind of guy who can make those passes, but if they get after him time and time again and don't let him sit in the pocket and make deep balls down the field— I do think that Dallas is going to have a good possibility of winning this game. Now, what's going to be interesting here is the Cowboys' number one ranked run defense versus a Seattle running game that just has struggled like crazy to run the football this season. And that's going to mean that Russell Wilson's pretty much going to have to put everything on his shoulders, just like Aaron Rodgers would have against the Cowboys in the previous week. If this whole thing breaks out like it is on on the board that you see here with the Cowboys playing the Packers and the Seahawks, we're talking about two teams that have struggled to run the ball against a dominant run defense, but two teams that can pass the ball at times. So it's going to be very interesting to see if those quarterbacks can put everything on their shoulders and get it done. Both of them have done it in the past, but the Cowboys are not a pushover team. This is not going to be an easy victory to go into Dallas and make that happen. Dallas' offense, I think, in this game against the Seahawks would struggle because Seattle's defense is very, very good. But if they can even put up 20 points, I think that they walk away with the win here. And I think Ezekiel Elliott and Dak Prescott together making it happen. If they get the win over the Packers, I think they're going to get that confidence. And I think Des Bryant's going to be able to go up and make some plays. If they get him in space, if they don't have him lined up against Richard Sherman, if they move him around the field, I do think that Des can make some plays. And if the Cowboys can run the football in this one, I do think they walk away with the win. So I am going to take Dallas here in a close one against the Seahawks. So that will set up Super Bowl 51. The Dallas Cowboys against the New England Patriots, the two top seeds meeting in the Super Bowl. Both teams love to possess the football and control the clock. It's going to be a battle of wills. Who can do that? Who can control the clock? Who can keep their defense off the field? And who can score the points when they have the ball in the opposing team's red zone? Dallas's number one ranked run defense, again, is going to be important here. They've got to be able to shut down the Garrett Blunt or at least keep him in check. But I think their struggles against the pass are going to make things very, very tough on this defense. The Patriots on defense are going to look to take away Des Bryant because the Cowboys just haven't proven to be able to make the big plays consistently when Bryant's been held in check. New England's the best team in the league at taking away a weapon on the opposing uh, offense. They look at their defense and they say, what can we do to shut down the opposing team's top weapon? And Des Bryant in the passing game, at least, is that weapon. So I do think that Des is going to be blanketed in this one. They're going to probably put a lot of coverage over the top on him, take away that deep ball, and then it's going to come down to the other guys. Can the other guys make the plays? Can Terrence Williams come up with a big catch? Can Cole Beasley make plays out of the slot? Can Bryce Butler maybe be the guy that makes the big catch down the field? Is Jason Witten going to be able to get enough receptions for first downs? I'm not sure. I can see Ezekiel Elliott having a nice game here, but the Patriots clamping down in the red zone against the Cowboys as they have all season this season against other teams. It just, it it seems to me that the Cowboys are going to struggle in a couple of areas, particular on defense. If you look at Julian Edelman and you look at Martellus Bennett in a matchup against the Cowboys, I think those are the guys that you have to look at. Now, the Cowboys have been 
awful at covering tight ends as of late and really throughout the season for the most part. And they really don't have anyone who can line up to shut down Julian Edelman either. So I really do think that Martellus Bennett, who used to be a Cowboy, by the way, could be coming in here and trying to humiliate the Cowboys. They're tr probably going to try and get him the ball. Julian Edelman, obviously, out of the slot is that team's top receiver. It's going to be tough for Dallas. They're going to have to do something to get in Julian Edelman's face to throw off the timing of those routes. Otherwise, it's just going to be a Brady to Edelman all day, all the way down the field, and then Martellus Bennett in the end zone, and the Cowboys are just going to struggle. If Dallas is going to win, they're going to need an absolutely monster game out of Dak Prescott, and I think their secondary is going to have to create some timely turnovers against one of the most clutch quarterbacks of all time. In the end, I think that the Patriots win the turnover battle, and I think that they do walk away with the win in this one, which would absolutely crush my hopes and dreams as a Cowboys fan. But I do think Tom Brady is going to win his fifth Super Bowl ring, tying him with only Charles Haley as the only five-time Super Bowl champion. What do you guys think? Do you agree with me? Let me know in the comments section below. I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say about this whole thing. Did you enjoy this video? If you did, please do me a favor. Drop a like. Let me know in the comments section below if I'm right or wrong on this whole thing. Thanks again for all the support, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Drop a like, and I will talk to you guys again soon.